Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Re Revelation Reflections. We're continuing today in Chapter 3. We're going to finish up the messages to the, to the churches, um, and we'll be reading Chapter 3, verses 14 through 22. Write this letter to the angel of the church in Laodicea. This is the message from the one who is the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of God's new creation. I know all the things you do. You are neither hot nor cold. I wish that you were one or the other. But since you are like lukewarm water, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. You say, I am rich. I have everything I want. I don't need a thing. And you don't realize that you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. So I advise you to buy gold from me, gold that has been refined by fire. Then you will be rich. Also buy white garments from me so you will not be shamed by your nakedness and ointment for your eyes so you will be able to see. I correct and discipline everyone I love. So be diligent and turn from your indifference. Look, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and we will share a meal together as friends. Those who are victorious will sit with me on my throne, just as I was victorious and sat with my father on his throne. Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. Well, that's the end of our reading today. And the reflection on this passage I titled, on fire for Christ. This reading has one of my favorite images in it. Jesus knocking on the door to my heart. There is a famous painting that depicts the door with no handle on Jesus' side of the door. He is not going to barge his way in. He's waiting patiently for us as believers. Would you open the door to him? The message to the church in Laodicea is a bit challenging. There doesn't seem to be any sort of praise going on. Jesus finds them lukewarm, like their water. And like tepid water, Jesus wants to spit them out. Laodicea didn't have its own water supply, so when it arrived via aqueduct from the hot springs, it was warm. Or from the cold springs, it was warm. Imagine making tea with warm water. It needs to be boiling hot. So too our devotion to Jesus, burning bright. Jesus wants us to be on fire for him. It's not very impressive to be indifferent. Yet how many churches have you encountered over the years that are exactly that? They're stuck in their traditions. The traditions themselves may be beautiful, but it is the attitude of settling and not letting the Holy Spirit ignite. We can become stagnant in our faith and soon begin relying on our own power. That is exactly what Jesus was talking about here. The people of Laodicea had another thing against them. They were wealthy. I'm in no way saying that having money is a bad thing. On the contrary, many wonderful things can be accomplished when you have an ample money supply. What is frightening is when people with wealth get comfortable. They tend to believe they have what they need. And if they need more, they can just go buy it. Where is the reliance on God? Where is the trust in God's provision? Do they realize they are poor in Jesus's eyes? Worldly wealth is temporary. Well, I recognize lyrics to a praise song we have sung in church recently, Light the Fire Again. 
the vision of standing before Jesus naked and poor, wretched and blind, coming to buy gold refined in the fire. I remember for years singing that song, but not truly understanding the intense meaning. It should be the prayer on our lips to light the fire again. Did you notice how each of our readings to the churches ended? With these words, anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. This is the last of the seven churches, but you likely picked up nuggets from each of the messages, just like I did. Maybe you see one of these faults happening in your own church. As we go forward in the book of Revelation, keeping these ideals in mind will be helpful. Jesus wants the best for us. He isn't going to bring us into something he is not there to support us in or prepare us for. We have prepared our hearts to be ready for the messages we are about to receive. We now have a bit of context to help us understand the visions that will unfold in the following chapters. Take some time today to think about how you can ignite your passion for Christ again. Let's pray. Make this your prayer today. Lord, forgive me for being indifferent to the inequality I see in the world. I know your heart breaks for those who suffer and endure affliction. Ignite inside me so that I am glowing from within. May people truly see me sparkle with your spirit inside. Use me to make a difference in this world. Thank you for how you gifted me and the opportunities you provide for me to praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, have a wonderful day. We will be back again tomorrow with another, another reading in our Revelation Reflections. See you then.